Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film The Hobbit from 1977, which I guess is technically a TV movie. I wanted to do The Hobbit and Fellowship of the Ring because I realized with the new coming Hobbit trilogy that comes out at the end of this week, since there are three animated Tolkien films, and there is the three Lord of the Rings films, and there's going to be three Hobbit films, I figure every time there's a Hobbit movie in this Hobbit trilogy, I will do one of those other three series of films. So I'm doing The Hobbit and The Fellowship of the Ring this year. Next year I will do Lord of the Rings and The Two Towers with the second Hobbit movie, and then it'll be, I guess, Return of the King and Return of the King when the last Hobbit film comes out. I thought that'd be fun. It's just a cool series I'm doing on all the Tolkien films that I guess have ever been made. I believe, I don't think there's any others. The Hobbit, the novel, kind of has a special place in my heart because it's kind of the first real book I read as a kid. I had read like smaller books and kids books and like goosebump books, but I hadn't really read a real book like The Hobbit. And even though people consider it children's literature, I don't really. That's kind of the way they came about this animated film. So when I finished the book, I obviously wanted to see this cartoon. I understood at the time, having read the book, that it wasn't the best adaptation. Since there wasn't really any chance of a Hobbit movie getting made in the mid-90s, my interpretations of The Hobbit after reading the book was this, and then the Ian Holm BBC radio production, which is actually really good. And if you're a Tolkien fan, I absolutely recommend it. I would listen to that a lot of times, but I would also watch this quite a lot and even though I knew this wasn't that accurate I still kind of loved it I watched it a lot it was rather short I like the animation style my dad who was very into Tolkien and his friend this guy Michael Powell and they'd come over he'd come over like every Friday or I don't think it was just Fridays he would just come over every now and then they play Magic the Gathering together I played Magic the Gathering but they played some intense Magic the Gathering games like some real intense shit. Really intense nerd shit. I think they had played Dungeons and Dragons at a certain point. I was like eight or nine. I just remember they'd be sitting across this big table like contemplating what to do next. I was like, whoa, that is some serious magic card playing right there. You know, they were big nerds, but Michael Powell was a big Tolkien fan. I, a huge Tolkien fan. Like he knew so much about Tolkien. I would always ask him things about Tolkien when I was a kid because I was so into The Hobbit. I kind of read Lord of the Rings, not really, but I was very into The Hobbit. And I remember watching this one of the times and they, he came over and there's a scene with Elrond and the Elrond character is pretty badly designed. I remember Michael Powell, my dad, commenting on how ridiculous Elrond looks in this movie. This, this film isn't exactly accurate. But at the time, much like comic book films at this time, I kind of understood that this was the only way this stuff was going to be made, so I just accepted it. It wasn't worth getting that upset about. This was called an animated musical television special, which it has all the songs in it to its credit. The only song that is original and the only part that isn't in the book is The Greatest Adventure, which is pretty cheesy and has that kind of like that 70s folksy, even his voice sounds like it should be playing on vinyl kind of sound to it. They really thought this would be kind of a bigger hit than it was. It didn't really do that great. I had always thought this was a film in theaters and maybe it did play in a few theaters in certain countries, but I can't find any knowledge of that. All I can find that it was first broadcast on NBC in 1977 and I've seen some merchandise from it. So I always kind of thought this was a movie movie, but it's just a TV movie. And Rankin and Bass are kind of most famous for Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer TV special. They're more known for their stop motion animation. And this was actually not animated by their studio specifically. It was actually animated by Topcraft. They worked with Topcraft again when they did The Last Unicorn. Topcraft is actually the precursor to Studio Ghibli. When Miyazaki formed Studio Ghibli, he basically took everyone from Topcraft and made Studio Ghibli. So a lot of these people who worked on the Hobbit film and animated the Hobbit film would go on to work on Totoro and Grave of the Fireflies and all the other great Studio Ghibli films. They based the style of this animation on the illustrator Arthur Rackham, which is different from the usual Tolkien illustrations that we're used to. So it's a little bizarre in a way, but I kind of like the style of it generally. And I think the animation is actually pretty cool for the most part. I mean, I like the design of it. I like the movement. There are parts that I think are really bad, particularly the end battle when you have like the five armies battling and Bilbo's looking out. And it's just like a series of dots and dust fighting each other which is pretty lazy. <laughs> I mean, 
you know, that's the best you're gonna do? Okay, there's just a bunch of dots. I hope Peter Jackson does better than a bunch of dots fighting. For the most part, I like the animation style. Sometimes it's often limited. I think Topcraft got it to work for what they were doing for the most part. The voice cast, even though they're not very English, they basically picked American actors, but I think they're rather distinguished American actors and they did an all right job. I kind of like Orson Bean as Bilbo Baggins. I really like John Huston as Gandalf. I think John Huston as Gandalf is probably a pretty good choice. He has that deep kind of wizardy voice. I mean, I can imagine John Huston was a wizard. I even like the voice of Gollum, who was this guy Theodore, who I'm not very familiar with, but he was like a spoken word artist. And Otto Preminger was the Elven King. It was a little weird that the the Wood Elves were German. I really like the scene between Smog and Bilbo and Richard Boone, who plays Smog. I think they did a great job together. That's a cool exchange. Every time I've heard it, even in the the radio show. It's always the part that like gets me to pay attention, like makes everything like all my hair stand on end, like I have to hear the sequence. And it's always like so intense because you know what's gonna go down. You know the smog scene is starting, but it's like so quiet and like they're just having this dialogue and you can't see the thief. I don't think I'll ever really hate this movie. And I know there's Tolkien scholars absolutely hate this movie. I absolutely get why my dad and Michael Powell started making fun of how Elrond was designed and we have better Tolkien films now. And that's great but this is a great little adventure musical animated film and it's very short it has a good pace to it i like the animation and even though yes it's not the most accurate you know maybe it's not the greatest thing in the world i will always kind of look on this fondly and kind of remember when i finished like my first kind of real book like i read a real book in my life you know i think everybody remembers when you stop reading like goosebumps books and kids books or animorphs or whatever you're reading and you read like a real book, like a book that like adults actually talk about. And for me, that was The Hobbit. It made me feel more mature, even, you know, as a fourth grader. It made me feel like I really had accomplished something with my eight years of existence. This was kind of the dessert to watch this like cool little animated fantasy film with some fun songs and orcs and goblins and wizards. And sure, yes, it's just simply not very accurate. But you know, at 77 minutes, could it ever really have been? I don't think so. So if you have seen The Hobbit and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to. And I will be back in a few days with my review of Fellowship of the Ring and then uh, the new Hobbit film. And that's it. I actually kind of remember the Bakshi Lord of the Rings more fondly and I guess we'll see in a year if I still look on it that way or if my perception of that has changed with time. 